In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure a Retrobit Wireless Tribute 64 for use in RetroArch and N64 emulation. The Retrobit Wireless Tribute 64 has, by and large, been my absolute favorite third-party N64 controller alternative to date. Just a lot of good features on real console and PC, and its use in N64 emulation is an experience that's on par with using it on a real console, which I just absolutely love. Now, unfortunately, RetroArch does not configure this controller automatically to be correct for N64 emulation. At one point, I feel like it did, but it doesn't do that anymore, so I'm here to show you all how to configure it manually so you can get the best experience out of your N64 emulation using this controller. Now this tutorial does focus on the PC version of RetroArch. We're going to be using the X input standard for the controller. But if you are on Linux or Mac or Android, you have an OTG cable and have the controller hooked up to that. The steps are pretty much the same. You're just not going to be able to use the guide button, but more on that in a bit. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with this process, you are going to need RetroArch installed and running. And then of course a wireless Retrobit Tribute 64. So get the USB receiver plugged into your PC and pair it to your controller. And now the first time you pair up a Retrobit Wireless Tribute 64, it's going to be in direct input mode. So you'll see the one green LED on the controller, but we're going to want to change this into X input mode for PC use. Now you may be asking why does it matter? Well, because the guide button on the Wireless Tribute 64 is registered as the start button when in direct input mode and there is no guide button on the controller, which is kind of annoying because then you can't access the quick menu or anything. So to change to direct input mode, you just hold down start and B for about five seconds. There we go. So now it says there's an Xbox 360 wireless controller plugged in and there are now two green LEDs showing up on the controller and that means we are in X input mode. And that is what we want for this controller, because now this is our guide button, so we can access the quick menu with it. Start is start. Uh, the rest of the buttons are a little funky, but they work for navigating the menu as you would hope. So you can use the thumbstick to navigate the menu, D-pad, and then A and B act as A and B. So you can go in and do all that, and it's great for navigating the menu, but not so great for playing N64 games. So what I like to do is load up um, a shooter like GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, or Turok to configure this controller. So with the game loaded up, you can go into your pause menu, and the thumbstick's already configured correctly, so you can go wherever you want in here. But you want to make sure that you set the control style on Perfect Dark or GoldenEye to like 1.2 Solitaire, so you can really know you're getting the right uh, configuration going. But by default, none of the C buttons are going to be doing anything. These should be making me move. A and B aren't working as intended because B is now assigned to down C, which is fun. The D-pad works as intended. And then thumbstick is also configured. And then um, R, L, and Z work. But this uh, right trigger actually changes the face buttons to your C buttons. And you can see that it's wrong. But anyway... That's kind of the whole point of this video. So, press the guide button on the Wireless Tribute 64 to access the quick menu. Again, that's a feature that's only available with the X input one. Otherwise, this is the start button, which is really dumb. But, head down to controls. Port 1 controls. And you can see that we can change all of our buttons now. So from here, we could just go through and remap everything until we can get it being N64 perfect. So the D-pad was good. All right, our B button. So this is actually the physical B button, at least on my controller. So we're going to change this to B. A was already correct. And now in game, B was our down C button. So we need to change this one to our C buttons and it's down C so we want it on the Y axis and I believe it's Y plus. So then I can just press the home button real quick and verify that and when I press down C it moves me backwards as intended. So that is the correct that is the correct mapping for that one. 
And then our Y button, I believe, is left C. So we're going to change this to C buttons X minus, maybe? Yep, okay. So there we go. Now we have, we have left and back. Now we don't have a select button on N64, so we don't have to worry about that. Start's already correctly assigned. So is left, right shoulder button. Trigger is also assigned. But if you want to assign your right trigger, you can do that as well. You can change it to a Z trigger, so you can fire with either one of these. Now, the last two C buttons that we need to map are actually assigned to left thumb and right thumb. So I'm not quite sure. I think that it's right and left, so we'll just try it out real quick. So we want this on Y minus and this on X plus. Nope, they are complete opposite of what I thought. Cool. So we want this one X plus and this one Y minus. There we go. And now we have all of our directional movement. Perfect. And then we can aim and shoot with uh, that trigger as well. There we go. So that is all of the button mappings correctly placed for N64 emulation, like that's a one-to-one -one button mapping. You could change the buttons to whatever you want per game. But this is how to set it up for a one-to-one -one button mapping. So I could just come out here, go up to manage remap files, and you could save this as a game remap file or a core remap file. I like to do core remap files so that way every N64 game I load up with this controller is going to have one-to-one -one button mappings. If you want to do game-specific button mappings after this point, you can come in here and save it as a game remap file. But there's a little bit more here we could do to get a better experience. So backing out of the control menu, if you go up to options, scroll down to pack controller options, turn the dead zone off on this controller so that way it just has the built-in controller dead zone just like it would feel on an N64. And then if you want to increase or decrease the analog sensitivity, I think it's pretty good just at default, but if you feel like it's too sensitive, you can increase this value until you just get the right feel, or if you want it more sensitive, you could decrease the value so that way it is more sensitive. But again, I think it feels great at default, feels very similar to what you get out of this controller on real console, but the options are there if you want them. And then of course you could change between rumble pack and uh, memory pack and transfer pack um, right here as well. And the great thing about it is this controller does have rumble built in and it works great. So just really authentic N64 experience um, in your emulation by using this controller and I absolutely love it. And with that, you should now have a perfectly button mapped RetroBit Wireless Tribute 64 for use on RetroArch. So again, while this tutorial does focus on the PC version, it is possible to do this. I mean, the steps are gonna be relatively the same for Linux, Mac, um, Android, you just can't use X-Input on some of those systems, so you're going to have to map a few more of the buttons than you did with this tutorial, but the process is going to be the same. You're just going to have to change more things and deal with no guide button, unfortunately. But thank you so much, as always, for watching this video. It means the world to me that you spend even a minute of time on this channel. It really helps us keep it going and growing, and we are super appreciative of that fact. But now I do have a couple of big favors to ask you here at the end. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like, dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button, notification bell, so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. Now, for anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. You're amazing. You're champions, rock stars. Just thank you for believing what we do and helping support it. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.